maxillofacial surgeon and researcher from India, passionate about medical 3D printing and alike technologies which can help reimagine healthcare. So let me tell you a story. It was 10 p.m. in December 2011, almost 10 years from now. A 22-year-old young man was rushed to the emergency department of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. This man was gasping, with his face completely smashed and injuries to his abdomen. He was rushed to the emergency department, was seen immediately by highly skilled trauma surgeons, and within no time, he was taken to the operation theater. And this was the first day of my training at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. It took them the whole day. And the next day morning, when this patient was then shifted to the intensive care unit. When I went to see the patient in the morning OPD, and I visited the ICU, the intensive care unit, the patient was alive, was alive, but still fighting for life. He was unstable, but he was better than the, day, than the night before. His mother saw me and she came up to me. She was full of complaints, concerns, fear, so much more. I calmed her down. This one accident had changed the life of this person forever. I tried to calm her down and explain her that she has to understand that this boy will not be the same as before, both externally and internally. I kind of prepared her for what was coming next. He might have to undergo four, four to five surgeries, even more, before he might or might not get back to normal. And as I did that, I kind of prepared her to act as to what was to happen next. This patient underwent his journey. And fast forward, in the year 2018, which was almost seven years from the time of his injury, while I was working with my research on medical 3D printing, this patient with his mother finds me in the outpatient department of surgery. By then, he had already had four to five surgeries, and the last surgery for him was a plastic surgery, and that had failed for him. Now, this was a complex case. Nobody was ready to operate on him, he had nothing to lose, nowhere to go. And I still vividly remember that with the consensus of my mentor, Dr. Sushma Sagar, who's a professor in surgery, we, put this, uh, we took up this case and actually put him into the research that I was doing using 3D printing as a planning tool for reconstructive surgeries. At this point in time, our industry partner was STARS India, Dr. Nason was the person who helped us around with this project, and we successfully conducted his surgery in 2019 as a team. It has been almost three years since then, and the patient is doing well. And this patient who came to us after seven years of injury, who could not speak well, who, could, who didn't look normal, who couldn't eat food, he hadn't bitten on food for the past seven years. And today, in one year's time, he can eat well, he can chew well. He looks fairly normal. That was seven years before. And this is the patient today. He's almost getting married in the next month. And that's the news I got right today. And so with technology, we could squeeze seven years into one year. Isn't that amazing? How many such patients would be requiring these kind of surgeries? We did many patients before this and after this. But after that came the pandemic. And this was a bad time for the whole world. I took this time as an opportunity and started interviewing surgeons across the globe who were working with 3D technology. And I put together all these interviews as a podcast called the Surgeons in 3D Printing Podcast. I did this 
to help people embrace technology, to help doctors learn this technology, embrace this technology, so that we could help more and more people. I went ahead, further advanced, to see what else was needed here. And I found that there was no book for surgeons on this. And so I, I went ahead, collaborated with one of my mentors, who is in the United States of America, and we wrote a book for the medical and dental professionals who wanted to learn 3D printing technology. Further, I started an online course for dental professionals so that they could learn this technology. And lately, I've also started speaking on national and international forums about 3D technology and its acceptance and implementation for the betterment of patients. My journey will still continue, but today, I wanted to say something. Technology has the power to change our lives, if it is in the right hands. We need to make it work for us. What I was able to do during the pandemic was because I had practiced this muscle called resilience. What my patients were able to do when they faced such adverse situations was because of their resilience. Each one of us is resilient. You, me, each one of us could walk, talk while we were small. We could learn new things because our parents had the resilience. And today, when the world is completely different, we can have this talk. Aren't we resilient? Of course, yes. Isn't this powerful? Resilience is the way we respond to adversities or challenges that come our way. Connecting the dots in my life, I realized a three-step process to work on our muscle called resilience. And I intentionally worked on this process and I found it really successful for myself. And today, I would like to share that with you because the circumstances are dire and we really need it. So the acronym to my three-step process is ARC. So to change the arc of your life in challenging times, the step one is A, which is acceptance. Accepting that there is a problem. The moment we accept that there is a problem, our minds calm down. We are able to take decisions. Let me give you an example. When there was this pandemic going on, the whole world was startled. People were blaming each other, blaming countries, blaming people, politics, so much more. But there was a group of people who started working on the frozen supply chains. They started creating masks, headbands, personal protective equipments, oxygenators, so much more. It's still happening. Were they not undergoing the pandemic? Or are they not suffering from the pandemic? Of course not. But they accepted and crossed the step one very soon and came to the next step, which is reorganization. By reorganization, I mean to say that looking at what you have, the skills that you have, the capabilities that you have, and reorganizing them to create a plan and then what to do with the plan. That brings me to the next step, which is contribution. So these people who are creating these masks, headbands, personal protective equipments, they started looking out for problems in the society, the opportunities, because these problems are the opportunities to serve, to add value, and that's where we complete the arc. The moment you find the opportunity to serve and the more you add value, the better you get. That is what resilience is. Today, I'd like to say that TEDx is a platform where my words will reach the professionals across the globe. The pandemic has well proven that healthcare is in trouble. And let me reiterate, healthcare is in trouble. We, as healthcare professionals, need to act on this by the same arc. Accept that healthcare is in trouble. 
Step B, reorganize, reorganize our capabilities. Our capabilities to learn different technologies, our skills to learn different technologies, so that we can leverage and pivot these technologies to help the patients and people around us. And then to contribute, to contribute to make a resilient healthcare system. So that, my friends, if adversity strikes again, we may come out of it better and stronger. Thank you.